All right, Dwight, live on the Skyline Princess, one of the two men in this shot is the dominant track and field performer of the decade. We talked about Marion Jones, we talked about... Yeah, thanks. Um, the in original plan had been to run both events here, the right. 200 meters and the 400 meters. You opted within the past three weeks to switch to just running the 400. Why? Some injuries earlier in the season that uh, fortunately now I'm over and, and have put behind me, but uh, the injuries put me about a month or so behind in my training. So uh, the 200 takes a little bit more training to get ready for and more races to get ready for. And I've only had two races uh, since coming back from the injuries. And so, I'm, you know, it's enough time to get ready for the four, but not, not both events. Aside from winning the 400 meters here at the Goodwill Games, what are your horizons for the rest of the summer in both events? Well, I certainly want to be uh, ranked number one at the end of the season, and but uh, most importantly, uh, you know, win here at the Goodwill Games and uh, just finish with a good, strong season and a good showing in the 400. The injuries that dogged you earlier this year, uh, left over from the same injury that bothered you at the World Championships when you won the 400 in a brave struggle last year. No, I think you know it's it's been uh, you know just different injuries, different a hamstring here and Achilles, just real small things, but you know enough to keep me down and not be able to go out there and train at a hundred percent. So uh, you know different little injuries, but still enough to keep me out of the game for a while. The obvious question there, and I know you've answered it before, but I've got to put it to you again: the 150 meter winner take all challenge race against Donovan Bailey. Again, another injury that you know in a in a series of injuries, just still injuries happen in different races doesn't mean any one particular one's related or any one's particular, you know, related to running any particular race. It's just part of the sport, part of the job. It happens. Nothing about the schedule you would have changed looking back? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I really don't see why. I mean, what, what could I have gained, you know, from changing anything? I mean, you make decisions, you go out and run races. That's what I do for a living. I mean, it's, I can, the only thing I could do is not, you know, find another job. That's the only thing I could change. There's continued discussion of the public appeal of track and field. So many people in the stands, so excited at Atlanta, so much of a television audience for those games. And then two years later, track and field once again seen as a sidebar rather than a main event by the general sports audience. Frustrating to you? Uh, frustrating, but, uh, you know, unfortunately I'm getting used to it. And that's not a good thing, but, I mean, it's, it's what's been happening. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm asked about it a lot, but I think the question should be posed to USA Track and Field. It's their responsibility, and, you know, I, you know, I have to wonder how many people are asking them this question, asking Craig Masbach this question. He's the head, and, you know, and uh, I'd like to know what their answer is because they're the ones that are, uh, you know, in charge. I mean, the athletes, we can't do any more than what we're doing. We're some of the best athletes in the, in the world at this sport, and, I mean, what else can we do, you know? go out and give great performances and it's up to our federation to go out there and uh, you know, market the sport well. You have carried the public image of the sport for the past three or four years because of your greatness. Now Marion Jones comes along and there's another story to go with Michael Johnson. Good for you, a welcome uh, phenomenon on the scene? Uh, I think more importantly than good for me, you know, it's certainly good for me, but it's good for me because it's good for the sport. And uh, anything that's good for the sport is good for me. I mean, Mary is a tremendous talent and, and a good person and a great personality for track and field, and we need that in the sport. So she's certainly a welcome uh, addition to, uh, to what we have. And, and as I said before, and I just only hope that USA Track and Field will find ways to use athletes like myself and her and, and, uh, and the other athletes out there who are stars of this sport to, uh, to market the sport and to, to uplift the, uh, the level of awareness. Great performer, good person. There's a consistency there. Right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks so much for being with us. Right. Michael Johnson, you'll see him Tuesday in the men's 400 meters. The whole label of being kind of standoffish and all of that was something that, you know, the media felt like, you know, that, you know, and they created that because they get disappointed, like, oh, he's kind of standoffish because they didn't get some kind of boom pow, you know, I was abused as a child, or, you know, I'm put on a dress, you know, or I was, you know, you know, wasn't, you know, I was in a gang and, you know, we didn't have any shoes to put on my feet, but now I'm making money kind of, I didn't have any of those stories. So, you know, just a regular old guy. As the youngest of Paul and Ruby Johnson's five children, Michael was a regular child, sort of. He had fun. He loved having fun. He loved, always loved speed. Another thing that he liked, a little cartoon speed racer on TV. So speed has been kind of with him ever since he was a little child. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. I'd run home every day from school Mom, but I already had the television on, turned to the channel, so I could watch Speed Racer every day. 
This daily dose of Speed Racer motivated Michael. At an early age, his legs became his wheels. I've always liked speed. I always liked running. I used to run everywhere, you know, through, uh, throughout the house. I'd run, you know, running into walls and stuff. From running into walls to breaking the speed limit, Michael blazed through the mid-90s. A race with seven other guys, he says, is still all he needs to get excited about going to the track. It never really felt like to me after winning that many races that I'm invincible. I, can, I, I can't lose. Because once you can say to yourself, I'm invincible, I can't be beat, then why go out there and work as hard? It is this virtue of hard work, nurtured in Michael by his parents, which has allowed him to live out his boyhood cartoon fantasy. But the public has forced another alter ego onto this speed racer, that of Superman. Winning the 400 on a tender hamstring at last year's world championships was not, insists Michael, the result of superhuman powers. It was just about simple drive. That race had just proven to all of the people who felt like and all of the people who had said so long that, you know, yeah, Michael's used to winning and he's good when he's winning and he's good when things are going well, but when things aren't going so well, we don't know what he can do. So his opponents found out. And when a fan gave Michael the Superman shirt, his parents knew exactly what he was going to do. They raised him with the modest values of Clark Kent. If someone gives you something, you know, kind of display it a little bit. So he did display it on his way around the track with respect to the you know, person who gave it to him because those are fans. And they may feel that you're pretty close to Superman or not, you know, or, or you made them happy by doing what you did. Everyone wants to make Michael Johnson into a more intriguing character. But life isn't about cartoons. Michael's normality is his character. I'm proud of you know, what I've been able to do with what I've been blessed with and not being complacent with him and just saying, you know, hey, I'm good. I'm proud of my parents for making me that kind of person and teaching me that it's not something that's just inherent in me. It's not just the kind of person I am. That's who my parents taught me to be.